overcoming discouragement. Okay? Can you just explain how to explain the compensation plan? Okay, explaining how to explain the compensation plan. Well, explain the compensation plan. Alright, yeah. The residual income. Residual income? Yeah. The pipeline. The pipeline. <laughs> so did, just by show of hands, did, who saw me at convention? And would you like that? Would you like that type of thing? Okay. So you were you want to you want to see that same thing again? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, yeah go ahead. I was gonna say how to throw away the buckets. How to throw away the buckets. All right. Good. Good. Yes. Um, faith in your leaders. I know. Faith in your leaders. Now, when you say that, are you talking upline or downline? Downline. Yeah, like, you already did. Oh. Like Both. <laughs> Carol, they don't like you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, good. Um, anything else that I need to be kind of aware of? Everybody's yeah. here because they want to be a presidential diamond. Absolutely. So how to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe just how to get to presidential. I'd be satisfied with diamond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think so until you get there. <laughs> <laughs> then it gets more enticing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what happens is you get to diamond and you're like, you know, <laughs> if I just did this much more, it would like double my income. And you're like, well, if then I just kept going, it would double it again, you know, so it's, it's kind of interesting how you're... In, in fact, I think when I started, the thought of... Uh, I think 10,000 residually, you know, a 10,000 residual check was like, oh man, that would just change the world, you know. And you kind of get there and you're like, not so, not so much. <laughs> not quite, but it's nice. Okay, good. Um, okay, that gives me a good idea of what I'm dealing with and what you want to learn. Uh, so let me think about how I could. Uh, how I could structure this to kind of get picture needs a little better. Um, are you guys familiar with the three door method? If I were to just throw that out there, no. Three door method. Do any of you um, does, does the idea of calling somebody up about DoTerra is that ever a, a frightening thing for anyone? Yeah. Is that a, really? So can I have hands high on that one? I know. All right. Okay. Good. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay, so what what this is is this is a um, this is a process, and I think that I think that if you learn how to do it correctly, that it removes fear and discouragement. Like you were mentioning discouragement, the thing that's discouraging is when you put a lot of time and effort in, and you're not getting the results you hope for, right? Like if, if you're putting in the time and effort, um, then great. Now, I, with that said, I want to actually just just tell you that I was. Talking to this one lady that uh, she goes, I just don't think I can do DoTerra. It's just too overwhelming. I can't do it. And so I said, Okay, let's explain that further. What do you mean by overwhelming? Like, and, and I ultimately had to get it down to how much time are you spending on DoTerra every week? And uh, when she finally fessed up to it, it was one hour a week. Okay, and she felt like it was overwhelming. And so then, as I as I delved in a little deeper, what it was, what was overwhelming was the constant nagging in the back of her mind that she should do something to do it. <laughs> and, and the fight within to actually do it. Does this, does this resonate with anybody? Like you're like, I know I should call someone, but you know that kitchen really needs cleaning, and how can I call someone if my kitchen is out of order? So you know it's the you know and, it, the, and it's the constant battle that goes on in your mind. Is that is that true for anybody else? Okay. So what this is is this this is just gives us a, a concept of, of how to do this. Now, Rod and I before we actually Rod is my enroller, so this is the guy that introduced me to DoTerra. And uh, the best day of my life. Next to like my my marriages to my two I'm just kidding. my marriage and my four children was probably the day that Rod introduced me to DoTerra. If I were looking to look at it at the impact it's had on my life, now I also know that the best day of his life was when he talked to me about DoTerra. <laughs> because if I had me for a downline, I'd be so happy. <laughs> So, but one of the things is, is that Rod 
Todd and I were actually in conventional business. We owned, we owned our own company before we got into doTERRA. Um, in fact, um, we, we both had been entrepreneurs. I, ever since I was in college, my, when I got married to my first and only wife, um, she, she was graduating college and I was just starting. Um, and I remember her asking me, she said, so what happens if I get pregnant and you're a freshman in college? And I'm a, you know, she go, and I said, oh, oh, no problem, you can come home. You know, if you want to be a stable mom, no problem. So then, a year or so later, she's expecting, she's like, looking at me like, okay, hot shot, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up in Washington State in a, farm, in a small farming community. Um, I graduated with like 25 kids. And, you know, the town still has no stoplight. It's very small. Anyway, um, so that's where I grew up, and I knew how to farm. And basically with farming, um, you, you, you trade hours for dollars, right? I, I got paid, I think, eight bucks an hour, you know, something like that when I was, when I was a farmer. But anyway, and so while I was going to college, I quickly realized I don't have enough hours to trade for dollars. I can't, that, that scenario is not going to work. And so from that point on, I actually started a little business while I was in college to try to just pay for my wife to be able to stay home and for me to keep that promise to her while I was finishing school. And uh, it so happened that by the time I finished college, I was so ready to graduate because I had a business, and I was been stuck in Utah ever since. Like I, I never intended to live in Utah. I'm not from here. I always wanted to live outside of the area, in fact. And so, um, and so all of a sudden, I graduated from college, and I have a company that's grown from what was just a little thing for me to pay the bills to, you know, lots of employees, and I'm thrown into the, the business world. And so from that time forward, I've always been into conventional business. I tried network marketing one time when I was about 22. Um, I did Amway, <coughs> and and let me tell you, have any of you been in an Amway? <coughs> if, if so, I would have given you the biggest standing ovation ever because wow, you are awesome. You can do that. So anyway, so I uh, so that was really my only run into with with network marketing, but the concept was interesting to me, and um, thankfully, when DoTerra came into my life. Um, I, I look back and I go, my word, my life has prepared me perfectly for this opportunity, for this moment. And uh, I had run different sales companies, different things like that. And so when doTERRA came along, immediately I was like, okay, we gotta create systems, we gotta create sequences, we gotta create a, a system to ensure that someone who wants to succeed can succeed, to remove all of this discouragement. Because discouragement, I think, comes when someone starts trying to build a business and they don't know for sure if the activities they're doing are actually going to give them the results they want. If you knew that what you were doing was going to produce a diamond, that would make life a little easier, right? It's the uncertainty. It's when you're doing the activities and you're like, I don't know that this is going to make me diamond or not. Is this, do you see what I'm saying? Like, I hope it is, but I don't know. I want you to understand that everything I'm going to teach you today produces diamonds. Okay. It, it does. It produces diamonds. Um, uh, I, I, have, uh, I have eight diamonds on my teeth and a blue, another blue diamond on my teeth. And uh, in fact, just this last month, like another diamond popped. And, and let me tell you that as and Rod has other blue diamonds and diamonds on his team, and we have weekly team calls, and I interview all of those diamonds. And let me just tell you that what I'm about to share with you tonight is something that uh, Bryant and Brianna Hess from Wisconsin have incorporated into their business. And when I interviewed them this last Monday, I said, so how did you go Blue Diamond? What, what happened? They said, well, we didn't expect to go Blue Diamond last month. But we looked in our black back office and went, huh, we're so close, we may as well go for it. <laughs> and so, so I was like, well, then how did, so how did you do this? And they said, we just did what we were taught. And we focused all of our efforts on the activities that you told us to do. And as a result, how would you like to get to the end of the month and go, wow, we're pretty close to Blue Diamond. We may as well just go for it. You know what I mean? They said, we actually planned on going to Blue Diamond in January, but it happened to be soon. So 
So anyway, I just share that with you because I just want you to know that what you're going to learn actually works. So what, what is the secret? If we were to go to the tops of mountains, we would see this dude right here. Uh, and if we were to ask him how to do it, the, the sage of all wisdom, he would actually tell us this. Let's go to the next slide. Say, keep it simple. Okay? So let, let me just tell you that simplicity duplicates, complexity kills duplication. See what I'm saying? Simplicity duplicates. The more simple a process, the more likelihood that it will work and that it will duplicate. The more complex, it kills duplication. Is it, right? So yes. if you teach a class, if you have any thoughts in your mind that say, well, I can't teach a class as good as Carol, or I can't teach a class like Laura Jacobs, or I can't teach a class like this person. <coughs> the fact of the matter is, is that um, if you sit through a class and you are thoroughly unimpressed with the presenter but want to buy the oils, that's the perfect presentation. Because what happens is a person says, if you can do it, I certainly can do it. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, when I actually got introduced to doTERRA, um, Rod brought me over to Natalie Goddard's house. And I sat at Natalie Goddard's home for a little while, and, and I'm looking at they just went diamond the month before. And I think their paycheck was like 12 grand or something like that. And, and I'm looking at them, and, I'm, and the whole time I'm thinking, you went diamond. You. <laughs> you went diamond. And I left that experience going, if they can do it, I certainly can do it. Now here's what I've learned since. Natalie Goddard and Andy are extremely impressive to me. But the one thing they understand is that they come across as so unassuming. And it's all part of their, their trick. It's just a trick. I promise you. They're all like, oh, yeah, we love you. Come in here. <laughs> you know, that's what it's <laughs> but I'm telling you, they, they, they did a perfect job of making me feel like I could do it. In fact, Rod was telling me that one time after, after he taught many classes, and he could sit up in front of a, a room and teach, teach a class without a script easily. And then one time he decided he was going to read from a tear pad the entire time. What are essential oils? <coughs> essential oils are extracted plants. And he went and did that, and at the end of the class, people still enrolled, just like when he did when he did it all impressively. But better than that, a person at the end of the class said, I can do that. And he went, exactly. See what I'm saying? So simplicity duplicates, complexity kills duplication. Remember that. Everything I'm going to teach you is actually really quite simple. So what is the simple process of, of actually building a doTERRA diamond ship? Here it is. You walk through three doors with three invitations that lead to three presentations. All right? Three doors. Now what is a door? A door is simply a person's mental uh, willingness to learn more. So for example, if I were to go to a person and knock on a door, and I'd say, hey, would you be open to learn about essential oils? And they'd say, no, doors closed. If I were to ask someone, are you open to natural forms of health care? And they go, no, I'm not open to that. I say, OK. I have no need to try to convince anyone. In other words, when the door is shut, you knock on the door. And if the door remains shut, what do you do? You break down the door. <laughs> you don't break down the door. You just simply go and work with the doors that are open. If you want the process to be easy, easier for you, okay? So I don't try to convince the unwilling. I just work with those who are open. So let's go to the next slide. So here are the three doors. <clears throat> like I said, each door represents the mindset of a person. So the first door. Is, uh, is the person open to learn? That's what I want to know. Is the person open to learn? The next door is, are they open to use the products? And the third door is, are they open to share with others? So for example, let's say that I called you up and I said, hey, would you be open to learning how to take care of your family naturally? And you said, yes, I would love to do that. Then you are thereby open to learn. Does that make sense? Now, if you're open to learn, I'm going to invite you to a presentation. Remember, there's three doors, three invitations to three separate presentations. Okay. Now, the three presentations I'm going to show you tonight, those are the activities that create diamonds. If you do those three things, that is how you become diamond. 
So learn, if a person's open to learn, then they come to a class, which then, hopefully after the class, when they've learned, I'm now gonna ask them, hey, would you be open to trying the products out? Would you like to use the oils? Would you, you know what see what I'm saying? Would you like to get a wholesale membership? What I'm asking that, I'm asking is the person open to use and try the products? Now, if the person is open to use it, then I'm gonna ask, are you open to share with others? Now, let me ask you this question. Have any of you in here, when you call up your neighborhood, <coughs> right? So, over here is everyone that you know, and you're gonna take them through those three doors. You're gonna at least invite them and work with those that are willing to go through. Have any of you not called someone because you were afraid that they may not be ever able to afford the oils? Raise your hands. Which door are you worried about? Two. You don't know if the person can use it because your concern is they're going to be able to actually afford the oils. Have any of you not called someone because you thought they would hate network marketing? Two hands, are you for real? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so if you're afraid to call someone because of the network marketing aspect of this, which door are you focused on? Sharon. One time I sat there with a name on my list, it was kind of on my chicken list, there was someone that I was afraid to call, but I knew that they would, I knew that they would be awesome if they did this, but I was afraid to call them because, because I thought, what if, oh man, what if they find out I'm doing network marketing, oh, what are they gonna think of me? All those thoughts came to me, right? Is this, am I the only one that ever thought that? Because that came to me like in a big way. And as I'm sitting there, I thought back to this model and I went, wait a minute, who on my names list is open to learn about the oils? Who would be open to learning how to take care of their family naturally? Now, when I thought about just that, who, who, who on my list is a, is a possibility? <coughs> Everybody and everyone I didn't put on my list. It's like, who needs to at least learn? Is it, see what I'm saying? So I'm not asking you to buy. And I'm not asking you to build a business with me. I'm just asking if you'd be open to coming and learning. Is this clear? Yeah. All right, now if you can get that, that's gonna go a long way to helping you remove a lot of the discouragement and a lot of the fear of building a business so that you can just ask on a daily basis, okay? Now let's go to the next one. Now, this is what we're afraid of, right? <laughs> what does a closed door look like? <laughs> Looks like that, right? So if someone's closed, and this is what we're afraid of. What we're afraid of is, well, what if they're like that? Well, what if they are? Move on. They need, as, uh, as, they need as Tiffany Peterson <laughs> mentions, some will, some won't, so what? Someone's waiting. Okay, and what does the someone who's waiting look like? Let's go to the next one. <laughs> That's an open person. So let me just tell you that I have tried to build a business with people who are like the previous slide. And that sucks. <laughs> really, really bad. And I've also built a business with people like this, and it is a glorious experience. It's fun, it's rejuvenating. It is a totally different experience to run across the finish line hand in hand with someone like this as opposed to dragging them across the finish line. And I've done both. And dragging sucks and running with them is so awesome. It's one of the greatest things ever. Right? So so just remember that you're just looking for those that are open. If they're not open, great. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. Just work with those who are willing. So let's go to door one again. And again, so I'm asking the person, are you open to learn? Let me give you some just simple scripts that you might be able to use. So uh, one of the things I like to ask is, are you open to natural forms of health care? Very simple question. In fact, if I'm on an airplane and someone says, so what do you do? I answer with another question. Are you open to natural forms of health care? Now, I'm going to add another question in here that I use that I don't have in this PowerPoint. Another one I'll say is, what do you know about essential oils? And, and it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little. But they're gonna tell me what they know. And then, can I teach you about them? Now, um, <laughs> Rod, uh, I should probably let him tell the story, but, but, uh, but when he went out to Wisconsin with his mother-in-law, his mother said, you can do this, but I could never do this. And 
so he goes, you're so polished, you're so this, of course you can do it, I could never do it. And so then what happened was, is he goes, well, who do you know that might be interested in learning? And she goes, I don't know, let me see. She called a friend and said, hey, my son's in town, can he come teach you about the oils? Sure. And so she was setting up classes like that. I'll, oh, you could do it, but I could never do it. Hey, my son's in town. He can teach about the oils. And she set up classes for him all day long. And, he, and so every time he went out to Wisconsin, oh, hey, my son's in town. Can he teach you about the oils? And that's, this is all, this one was all that she asked. Can he come teach you about the oils? And as a result of that, she just went silver, right? And what's her check? $10,000. $10,000 last month. <coughs> well, she has some diamonds under her. Isn't it, though? Is they kind of excited? Right. So, so, um, all right. So that's door number one. So just remember that script. Let's go to door, and, and by the way, if I were, to, if someone was open to this, where would I take them? I'd take them to a class, right? This is the invitation to a class. Remember, there's three doors, three invitations to what? Three separate presentations. Let's look at the first presentation. This is just a tear pad. This is what I use. You can use whatever it is that you are used to using. Um, but here, this is the point I want to make in regards to uh, whenever you teach from a tear pad. When I first started in DoTerra, everybody taught off of PowerPoints with projectors like this. And I watched people go to classes and think I could never teach a class because I can't afford a laptop or a projector. That was the thought, and it's and and it let, added a level of complexity to the process, and com and complexity does what to duplication? It kills it. And so immediately at that point, I started creating a tear pad. The reason I created the tear pad was because I wanted someone to go this piece of paper. I can do that, right? So even when I'm doing a class, even if I have a projector and a laptop, I still will pass out pieces of paper. Not because it's more impressive, but because it's less impressive. Not because it's better, but because it's more duplic duplicable. Are you catching how we, what we mean by this? Now, one thing I want to tell you, here's a little phrase I want to, I want to make sure that all of you maybe can implement, and that is, um, the book is the expert, the oil is the salesman, you are the messenger. All right? So a lot of people say, I can't do this in doTERRA because I'm not a salesman. Great. You're the messenger, the book is the expert, and the oil is the salesman, okay? Now let me give you an example of what I mean by this. When I teach a class, every time I teach it, I share a message, this is the message that I share, and then I give them an oil because the oil is what sells it. So every time I cover a principle, I hand out an oil. So right here, since I, I can't read this, but I know what it says because I've read that a million times. It says, what are essential oils? They're, they're uh, natural defense, defense mechanism that comes from plants. They're highly concentrated. They're about 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. In fact, one drop of peppermint is like drinking 28 cups of peppermint tea. Let me show you. And then I pass around the peppermint oil. Right? So I share the message. I don't believe you. Okay? You don't believe that a peppermint is as, is as powerful as that? I have everybody take a drop, put it on their hand, and lick a drop of peppermint oil. And as their head is blowing up, I'm saying, what are you saying again? You don't believe what again? You think I'm lying again? What was that? And they're like, no, I believe you. Please turn it off. Now, can I tell you one thing I really like that I guess is I used to have people just put a drop right here and lick it because it gave them such a powerful experience. One lady, she went like this, and three drops came out. She went. I'm gonna do it! And she licked, and sadly she passed away, but... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. She's a gold today, almost platinum. So, three drops create platinum. <laughs> so what is happening is, is that, and this is something that I've actually changed it to, where I'll, put a, I'll have everybody put a drop in the middle of their palm, and I'll say, take your finger like this, and put it in your mouth, Top of your mouth like that. Then take a little bit and put it behind both ears. Then take the remainder, go like this, rub it on your neck, and then breathe it in. And just like that, the first oil that I've sampled, I've showed them how to use it internally, topically, and aromatically, all in one time. And they've experienced an oil. And again, 
I told, I shared the message. The oil is the salesman. Does that make sense? And then everybody has a modern essentials book, which is the extra. So remember, if you don't know how to do it, you feel like you're, if someone comes to you and says, what do you use for this? Even if you know the answer, please don't tell them. Say, hmm, let's look in the book and find out. Reference the book because the book is the expert. If you stand up there and go, oh, well, actually, you need to use two drops of lavender, lemon, and peppermint, blah, 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 it's like, guess what? Now they're saying, I can't do this because I don't know as much as you. When I first started attending classes, I would go to some events by Laura Jacobs, and she would actually stand in front of the room and teach everybody in the class how to do muscle testing in the class. And so we would all be sitting there going, okay, uh -huh, you know, and all this stuff. And, and people would like walk away. I actually lost a builder to it, who ended up joining another team who didn't do that. And she's now a ducking it. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, still, I, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> anyway, so, and Laura Jacobs came, this is before she was a diamond. She actually came to me. I, before I was in doTERRA, she came and sought me out for some consulting. And I was telling her, I said, if you want to know how to hit diamond? She goes, sure. I said, stop muscle testing in classes. <laughs> she goes, why? And I said, because everybody there thinks that in order to do it, they have to know how to do that. Yeah. Let the book be the expert. Let the book be the expert. In other words, let, I mean, it's not wrong to do it. You can do it. But if you want to appeal to the masses, do that. Okay? Whenever I do a class, at the very beginning of the class to engage the audience, what I'll do is I'll say, there's two ends of a spectrum. On one end are people that are so into natural medicine that they think doctors and medications are evil. And on the other end are people that are so into Western medicine they think anything natural is doo-doo. And then there are people that are in the middle that may be lean one way or the other. Where are you? And I'll have everybody go around the room and tell me exactly where they are so I know if I'm the only one. And then after they've all told me where they're at, I'll say, now let me tell you where I am on that scale. I'm in the middle. I think that modern medicine has inspired. I think it's blessed humanity in incredible ways. I'm really glad you don't have to deal with polio anymore. In fact, I'd be dead without modern medicine. So I never say anything bad about it. However, I do feel like we're way over.